That's kind of what that situation is. But I mean, it's, it's some people. She, you know, she dope. Yeah, she dope. She dope. So what was your first, like, hit? What was your My first, first the, 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 I did a whole bunch of, the, the first hits that I actually got paid for was, right. um, the Vanilla Ice shit, but before that, all of the, what, a lot I, of them was, baby? yeah, okay. all of that, that whole album project is the concept yeah. of, of me, Tommy Kwan, Rob Van Winkle, who's Vanilla Ice, and uh, mm-hmm. my dude, Kim Dr- Kim Gidry, Kim Sharp, okay. and uh, DJ Earthquake out of here, but that, oh, yeah, Earthquake, yeah, DJ Earthquake, Earthquake. Mm-hmm. Earthquake got the hit with Ice Ice Baby, we was all, it's one of them situations where we did that, where we kind of sat back and we was like, damn, you believe that shit actually worked? But it was also one of the things, like, from a marketing perspective, um, there was a club back in the day called City Lights and Monopolies out here in Dallas. Mm-hmm. I'm going OG old school. Yeah, going I'm going way back. I'm talking about my man, my man, Uche, the D.O. DJ Uche. That, 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 that was. In d <laughs> Uche was Mark. That was my dude. You know what I'm saying? R.I.P. That's my dude. Uche. And them um, introduced me to um to Tommy Kwan and all of that and all of those type of cats. And we went to uh, and this was kind of when we was on tour with Run DMC and what happened, we went to that club, City Lights and Monopolies. Tommy Kwan used to own the club and he's like, Hey man, I got this artist. And you know, Vanilla Ice was performing and he was basically out dancing to black people. And I was sitting there like, I was like, this white dude is stupid. Yeah. He's doing it. And then at that time you gotta realize it was um there's another artist that was out called MC Hammer. Mm-hmm. So my whole thought, this was my thought of the whole shit, and I'll let y'all in drum roll. The whole ideology for me with the Vanilla Ice thing is I always felt like people kind of always wanted somebody to represent them. Right. Like if you had a Spanish artist, they they want to spend, they would take a Spanish hip hop artist. To this day, this shit still is true. Right. Y'all can sit there and lie to your god dang self all you want to. But that's just kind of how this shit is. And there comes a time when you stop lying to yourself. And I'm going to let you people know as black people, because I don't play that African-American shit. Because I've been to Africa. And some of them motherfuckers don't like us either. <laughs> I'm going to let you know straight up. So I ain't no African-American. I'm black. I'm 145th and 8th in Harlem, New York. When this shit used to be black. And now that shit, Paris Hilton walking around with pit bulls and little puppies and shit. Some different shit. But anyway, <laughs> to get back to what I was talking about... My my whole ideology with that whole situation was you got this dude, MC Hammer, who to me really was an entertainer. He wasn't no rapper, you know, because back mm-hmm. in the day we had, to, you know, da, 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 the cadence or whatever. And he came in there dancing and doing backflips and shooting rockets and shit off. And we was like, <laughs> oh, we can't fuck with that. This dude got the whole the whole show or whatever. But my, my thought was I felt like white people wanted their own. Right. And that's kind of what that was. So I'm just like, I said, this dude dances his ass off. I said, in my opinion. I said he's putting it to Hammer's ass, but that dancing shit. Right. <laughs> I said, just he looked like him when he had the yeah, you know exactly. He had, he had the, 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 the shiny yeah. suit in the uh-huh. baggy. If people ever look at that shit, he had the shiny suit and the baggy pants when yeah. he first came out. Mm-hmm. And my whole my whole thought process was that was to take advantage of the fact that I always felt like America was a little bit prejudiced. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because no. just, just just a little, little just a little bit great again. Yeah, I say all the way. Just just a little great again, but. You know, but that that's just marketing. It's like it's like I tell black people, you're only ten percent of this daggone country, man. If you're trying to make financial gains in music, you have to kind of let everybody embrace what you're doing. Right. And it's kind of easier if you use people from their culture, or if they respect your culture and you're just that good, you're gonna win anyway. So I'm like, you really have nothing to lose. But back in them days, I was kind of like, there was there was nobody doing it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So yeah, then I was like, okay, this guy, to me, Hammer is not lyrically like the greatest thing you've ever heard. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So Tommy Kwan came up to me. He said, hey, man, would you want to work with my artist? He came to everybody on that tour. Everybody said no. I said, hell yes. I said, because yeah. I said, Cause this dude can do the same thing that this dude can do. Only thing is, 10 people to come see this dude, but 1,000 to come see him because when he was out on them early Run DMC tours, their whole audience was white. There weren't no black people in them audiences. I mean, you're talking arenas. And actually, you go there to this day, you go to a Kendrick Lamar concert, guess who's in the audience? White, white people. people. Exactly. Yeah, and that's, that's no, people, dis- no disrespect against but, white people, you know what I'm saying? Thank you. Because you're, you're well, talking about economics. Thank you. Hustling out of Grand Marquis Caprice. People always told me I wasn't going to be shit. But I always knew that I would be